Hey guys and girls, it's Nathan Birch here from the Be Invested headquarters and today I am delighted to bring one of the guys behind the scenes, Graham Turnbull, uh, which is our Senior Finance Strategist from Zinger Finance. So uh, thanks for coming on to Thank Facebook you. Live today. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm encouraging you guys to jump on board that are here. Feel free to ask some questions. That's why we've got Graham here uh, today. Uh, so just before we get started, um, obviously none of this is financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor, neither is Graham. Uh, he's a finance strategist, uh, which is responsible for, I guess, you know, building a lot of those large portfolios that we've been able to showcase over the years um, from being able to build for clients and whatnot. And um, yeah, the reason why I wanted to jump on the Facebook Live today is that I've made some very uh, you know strong calls over the course of the last twelve months. Uh, for those of you that are you know, sort of on our inner circle and whatnot, uh, I have been talking about the upcoming recession that we're about to see. Uh, I called it well before anyone even thought of it. Um, the, uh, the the real reality of things is that the monetary system is dying. We are heading into a a uh, recession that will be much bigger uh, than uh, 2008, 2009, which was the GFC. And uh, you need to get prepared for that. Uh, if you think about it, a lot of people will be scared about the potential of a, uh, a recession or whatever the case may be. Uh, this is not a, a recession. This is a liquidity crisis uh, that we're having at the moment uh, globally. Uh, this is uh, not something that's just purely Australian or purely property or anything like that. Um, if we look at some of the certain markets out there, just to give you a bit of understanding, uh, I spend about 15 hours, 20 hours a day researching, uh, educating myself on uh, monetary policies around the world and physical markets. So a lot of the time people say, oh, you look tired. Uh, this is generally because I go to bed at about five o'clock. I like to see uh, two sessions of open day tradings on certain markets. Uh, what we have seen out there over the course of 2018 so far, is uh, the, the, the Dow Jones is dying, uh, liquidity is being sucked out globally. Uh, I called at our 2017 Christmas party that we would see uh, liquidity get sucked out of the market and uh, between March and May, most people will realise that we're in a recession, but the real uh, kicker will be around August to November this year. It could be pushed down the road another 12 months. Uh, what does that mean for property investors? Should you be scared of buying property? Um, you know, so on and so forth. So for me, uh, I've been buying property every time I can sign a contract uh, since I was 18 years old. Uh, so it's about 15 years now. And, you know, there's always opportunities that are out there. The biggest thing that we're seeing at the moment is a credit crisis, a liquidity uh, problem at the moment. And, um, you know, what, uh, what we're seeing in the news uh, over the course of the last few years regarding the property markets globally, Sydney house prices are unaffordable. It's not just Sydney house prices that have been unaffordable, folks. It has been um, you know, the, Canada, the, the Canadian uh, real estate market. It's the UK, the US, uh, the Philippines. Uh, all these markets have been through the, the Europe area. Um, uh, property market booms. Now we're seeing uh, banking crises and regulations to the banks and the Glass-Steagall Act, which got installed yesterday or the day before um, by Bob Catter, which is basically splitting the banks, all the banks in Australia need to split into two, uh, which is just the, the layman's term for it, uh, to remove the consumer banking uh, from their investment banking, which will help protect us through uh, a recession. And uh, there's lots of changes that are in the finance market. So this is a bit of a, like, let's protect ourselves and what things do you need to look for in the market out there ahead? And what are some of the things that sort of, uh, you know, Graham is seeing being a finance expert in the marketplace. So, um, yeah, I'll throw it over to Graham now just to, and feel free to ask some questions. I can see a lot of you guys are online at the moment. Graham, what are some of the things that you're seeing out there um, in the market? In the market? Oh, there's a few changes. Um, uh, firstly, from the 1st of July this year onwards, um, the way the banks uh, will start looking at your credit report is um, completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, until now, whenever you go and get a, um, a credit uh, inquiry, say you go to Vodafone and get an inquiry done, it just says Vodafone so-and-so date. Mm -hmm. But from 1st of July onwards, mm -hmm. uh, this is coming from the CEO of Equifax, your Veda company. Mm -hmm. They're going to capture everything possible, like your Vodafone, what was the amount, mm -hmm. um, when this will happen. And also, they will also capture 
the, your repayments? How are you paying on a monthly basis? Is it regular or are you uh, in a default? Mm -hmm. So it's so it's important that you have your understanding on how to manage your accounts from that aspect. So if your bills are late, that'll affect you? Yes. If you've yes. got lots of new subscriptions for random things, yes. it'll show up in your everything, cash everything. for stuff. So yeah. it's going to be open there, so there's nothing to hide. Uh, if you don't um, disclose any debt, even if you, say for example, you have a credit card where you've not used it, it's just lying there, um, the advice is to close it down because that also will be captured, everything will be captured. If you don't disclose it, then it comes down to responsibility. That That is your responsibility that you have to disclose it and the banks can uh, just terminate or cancel the application. Yeah, so uh, over the course, since uh, September 2016, that's when APRA first started showing its head in Australia. It also was a point, um, I might post up on Facebook sometime shortly, um, some messages, just some print screens of messages between me and some of my mates back in uh, 2015, uh, 2016, sorry, about the actual day that I called the GSC 2.0 and basically that was um, when quantitative easing QE uh, number four didn't get rolled over um, and in essence it, uh, you know, we've not just had no quantitative easing. Nowadays the world is a wash of fake money. Uh, the monetary system uh, has changed many times over the years. Uh, we use a currency called fiat currency. Um, it's very important to understand how money works. Uh, I need to understand all this stuff because I've got more debt than anyone really in the, in the, in the country. Um, so for me, understanding how monetary policy works has been uh, literally uh, you know, over the last 1,000 years, the first hyperinflation occurred in 1024 AD, uh, which was in the, the Chinese, it was in China, um, and the fiat currency went to zero, and uh, there's been over 10,000 fiat currencies since then, and our dollar changed in 1971 when the Brent Woods Agreement went out, um, and they bought in the petrodollar, and the US dollar became the base currency of the world. So that's why when America catches a cold, everyone starts sneezing, or someone sneezes and we catch a cold, whatever it is that they say is the, 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 the saying. Uh, however, what we're seeing at this time in the marketplace is a liquidity crisis. All the liquidity that's been printed now, back in 2007, 2008, when the GFC hit, there was lots of uh, you know money printed off in order to uh, stimulate the economy to get it through a recession so we didn't see a recession. But what inevitably happened was, uh, you know, we've killed the dollar, and the dollar's been dying since about 1980s, and interest rates, if you go and pull out any of the charts around the world globally on interest rates, they're all heading down as a downward uh, trend, and we've now, in Australia, we've got the RBA rate at 1.5 or 150 basis points, and it has been unable to be moved uh, for the last two years, uh, and it's, it's the, the, death, the, death of the, the death of the dollar is here. Um, and all these things that are coming out, um, I don't think it's just by chance that we've got banking rule, banking commissions. Uh, we have got you know similar type of uh, inquests going globally to obviously wind back some of the scale and the size of these banks that are out there um, globally. And I think that if we look at Deutsche Bank, for example, I think that's the biggest time bomb that's about to implode. And you know, banks are cracking down on you know from every aspect and you know the reason why I wanted to get Graham on today is due to the fact I'm seeing it you know there's lots and lots of things that are changing what are some of the more what are some of the more uh, tightening areas in finance that you're seeing that are coming up oh apart from that definitely is the servicing aspect as well because now the banks not the banks but the uh, various uh, company bodies like your Royal Commission and ASIC and everybody is coming in and making sure that banks are lending responsibly. So they want to make sure that every single debt that you, that any one of us have has to be declared mm -hmm. before they can lend you any more. So servicing is tightening up. Mm -hmm. uh, things like your living expense as well. People, people say that I'm living on a thousand bucks a month with two yeah. kids. Banks are no fools. They have their own uh, average living expenses that they have. Um, the time it's taking to get through an application is is much harder. It takes a longer time. I remember walking into the office uh, last year around November, and uh, without mentioning the bank or which financial institution this came from, but I remember as sort of tightening stuff. There was a, a week where you know files getting processed and, and people's applications were going through. You were protecting the clients, but obviously helping them get the equity out and whatnot. Yeah. 
And I remember you saying that one of the clients, they could service for $2,000 per month, but after they changed the, the, yes. the back-end policies at the bank, they were negative like four grand a month or something yes. like that. Yes, it, is, so, it has changed like overnight. I mean, I see this every day. There's a lot of changes. And yes, you're right. That client, he was comfortably servicing before Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, this side of Christmas, he came back with all the regulations and the changes and the restrictions. Mm -hmm. And he's out again. He can't service. And yeah, that's 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 a very common trend that I'm seeing out there with investors. Uh, you know, with the inability to uh, service to pull out equity. Um, you know, a lot of people are. Um, you know, this is something to watch out for as we go through a recession. Uh, the recession is not property related, so just being very clear on that. If we look at, um, you know, whether it be cryptocurrencies, whether it be the stock markets around the world, <coughs> sorry. Um, everything is in a unwind, a, a, a credit unwind, a liquidity unwind, and I see the the real knife going into uh, the financial markets as um, you know the people that were hooked on cheap credit suddenly can't get access to it. And I'm talking about not homeowners or property owners. I'm talking about um, you know the, the the companies out there that are throwing money into an incinerator, the governments around the world, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, like the servicing's tighter, getting equity out. How are you finding equity? Um, it is it, it is getting tougher. Like I said, investment. Uh, sorry, servicing is getting hard. So uh, what what we're advising uh, clients is that if you have equity in your in your properties, um, there's no better time than now to release the equity and keep mm -hmm. it. Because as what uh, Nathan is uh, saying that there's going to be changes. So obviously we see the changes getting hard enough by the day. So if you can release equity, keep it. And um, and then if you if you can invest, obviously you uh, speak to Nathan and uh, your financial planner and everybody. But releasing equity is the key at this Re point in time. Releasing equity, and I, I can't stress on that enough. Obviously, with my non-financial advice that I'm uh, talking about here from from this end, uh, why would you want to release equity for one? It's going to get a hell of a lot tougher to get access to your equity. Uh, liquidity markets are drying up. Getting finance for anything is tighter and tighter and tighter. Um, so being able to get the equity now, first you can service for it, or you might be able to service for it, you may not be able to, but you've got a better chance because it's going to get a hell of a lot harder to get finance. Um, also from the second part is if the markets are coming backwards and we are seeing some activity happening on the negative scale on the price run, uh, it hasn't been so big reported as yet, but I'm definitely seeing it obviously due to my, um, you know, my, exposure to agents out there. No one speaks to as many agents as I would uh, within the market, within the property market, uh, or be by finger on the pulse with as many sort of property deals, whether it be through our law firm, through Zinger Finance, whether it be through our agency or whatnot. Um, but what will happen is as the sales stats are coming in, as the data is coming in, um, obviously it's going to be much harder for uh, for for the vows to stack up. Like we're seeing, you said to me the other day that there was a client that had equity and didn't get it. You told me in the lift. Before. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, the scenario was that um, we we were able to release about 60,000 from a client's uh, property. I think there was a couple of properties. Um, and then we said, okay, here's the options. You know, if you want to take it away, we can release it. Mm -hmm. uh, but he just hesitated or he just waited and procrastinated. And then he came back about a month and a half later. And then, uh, unfortunately, the valuation, we had to order another valuation. The valuation dropped. Mm -hmm. And uh, that basically is, is uh, that equity portion that he was supposed to, or he, he had options to release. Mm -hmm. it, the valuations came low, hence there was no equity. Yeah. That's so, a common trend that seeing out there yeah. a lot. Yeah. And, yeah, so if, if, if you guys are looking at pulling edge equity, looking at doing something, I guess getting access to equity isn't a matter of just going out and buying another property. Um, releasing equity and just parking to the side gives you the opportunity to, uh, I guess in essence, um, you know, have capital there. Like if no one's got capital, it could be for whatever the use is that you're going to use it for in the future, whatever. If no one's got access to capital, um, you know, releasing that equity now in case of a tough time, gives you you know options and yes. protection, I guess. So, um, cool. And what other things are you saying out there? I mean, there's a lot of, um, uh, like I said, changes, but the changes 
to me is for the for the good because obviously the banks don't want to lend uh, to somebody who can't afford the loan. So the changes are there for the good reason. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the way the um, how they're going to uh, start um, capturing your uh, reporting on the on the credit report is good. Where you know there's a lot of things that are happening but it shouldn't be happening. So it's all open now. So you can't you know um, uh, hide anything. So the only way is to make sure that you have the right um, accounts, as what you said. Mm -hmm making sure you set up direct debits, paying off your, your monthly repayments on time. Um, even your transaction accounts has to be positive, even if it's uh, if it's a $10 plus, it has to be a positive. So what I'm feeling is that, I guess, be mindful of what's coming into the marketplace, uh, be prepared, be careful of your cash flow and your bills yes. and being on top of all your utilities and whatnot. Um, be mindful that it's going to get much harder to get access to capital. Uh, it's getting harder. Yeah, the way I see it now, it is getting harder. Yeah. It's getting tougher. Um, so, yeah, if, if you get a chance to do something now, do it. Yeah. So, yeah, with it, I guess the main message is, is to don't be oblivious to the fact of what, uh, what, you know, what has been because market cycles change. It wasn't by uh, chance that the last, you know, 60 months we've seen the property market go gangbusters. Um, it's been due to the fact of the expansion of the monetary supply. Now we're in a tightening phase. Money's coming out and liquidity is coming out of all different markets. So, <coughs> sorry, guys. Um, so, yeah, be, be aware of that and be ahead of the curveball rather than behind it because that's where people get stuck. Um, uh, with it, I'm, I'm noticing also from, you know, there's been lots of scenarios like the phones and, you know, at Singer Finance has been sort of ringing off the hook and you guys have been getting busier and busier because of the inability for people to be able to structure loans out there. Um, I guess the foresight of the team and, you know, experience in the marketplace, um, you know, we've seen these markets beforehand. We've benefited greatly through the markets beforehand. We can analyze when these markets are sort of coming ahead and we can plan to be ahead of those um, those, those curves and the, the, the actual cycle. So um, uh, what about, what other things are the banks doing? Like the harder to get loans, uh, more difficult to, you know, they take longer, the communication it's, shit. It's the service level. It's a service yeah. level that the banks have uh, and, and because there's a lot of changes, so Banks don't know which which side of this uh, the change is going to happen, whether it's for the good or for not for the good. Um, it's basically it's all uncertainty what's happening, and therefore there's a lot of um, um, time it's taking to get a loan through. Mm -hmm. they, they're going through every single uh, row and and uh, detail before they can make a decision. Yeah, I'm seeing that on owner occupiers now, uh, investors, first home buyers. Uh, all areas of finance is getting tougher. Um, investor finance is getting very, very tough. Um, what I'm finding out there from speaking with the agents is that there's sort of split markets. So there's some markets where uh, purely sort of investors in those areas, those investor-centric sort of areas are getting much um, tighter and harder to obtain, like to get sales. The agents aren't getting sales in the areas. So I'm seeing that on my side of things. Um, and I guess it all comes back to the funding of the finance, if people aren't getting finance, you know, and to find opportunities like we just did a deal the other week, um, which was just an in-house sort of property transaction that we uh, occurred for our clients through the buyer's agency and we got that cheap because finance is tough out there, like getting access to the funding. You know, you guys will probably remember going back, you know, for those that have been following me for like 10 years, when I used to do all the, the bank repo deals, the bulk bank repo deals, I love those markets. Like it's not something to be scared of, it's something to be uh, looking forward to. But if you're not prepared for it, then A, you could get hurt, and B, you may not be prepared to take advantage of those opportunities as they start arising. So um, I've got some questions coming through while we've got Graham here. If you guys do have any questions and want to reach out to Graham, what's, your, what's the best way of contacting you? Ask uh, Graham at singerfinance.com.au. We'll uh, I'll just call you. the office. Um, yeah, um, you can go on our website, Singer Finance website. We have a website there as well, so you can post all your uh, questions, um, contact us. Yeah. Cool. 
Um, got some questions here. No doubt that if we're heading to GFC 2.0, that a lot of Sydney and Melbourne homeowners will feel the pinch, particularly in board at the peak. Um, there's a very interesting time out there at the moment. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got the bit of the flu at the moment until I've got my chubby sinus. Um, with it, um, the, the the pinch that's out there, I haven't seen bank repos on the on the rise at this point. I have been speaking with my uh, friends that are the home disposal company. So um, just to go through what a bank repo would incur, when a property gets repoed, the bank will uh, get a court judgment against someone. And then what they do is they uh, send it to a, a, a disposal company. The disposal company um, organises a real estate agent, gets the cleaners, all that sort of stuff. And these disposal companies are like the sort of trustee to um, sell the properties for the bank. And over time, <clears throat> it was sometimes like in the past, like I was fortunate enough to be able to build relationships over the years uh, with these disposal companies. And from my recent talks with them is that they've been employing a lot more staff in anticipation for, you know, for these things to occur. The difference, I guess, between now and the GFC, when the GFC was around, <clears throat> is that in the GFC, interest rates have gone up a lot. We're working on a 7.25% uh, interest rate from the RBA. Currently, it's at 1.5%. Credit is still cheap, but it's drying up. So um, the people that I think will get into trouble are the people that have uh, not planned correctly, uh, people that are expecting for the party to keep going without any bumps in the road. Uh, I expect that interest rates will come down. That's not financial advice. I personally feel that they'll come down a lot over the course of the next 24 months uh, to almost to zero. Um, that will be the part of the stimulus that comes after this, and this has occurred throughout every single market cycle um, uh, throughout my whole lifetime and before that. Um, what I, I, I see happening is not people losing properties because they can't afford to hold on to them. If interest rates go up by 1%, most people will be staffed. Uh, but it's not just the people that will be like mums and dads and normal people. It would be the businesses as well that wouldn't have access to liquidity that have been getting cheap credit and keeping their, uh, you know, businesses or whatever open. Um, yeah, so I haven't. It's a, it's a very interesting sort of market. It's very different to the GFC. That's why it's called the GFD. Um, it's going to be much deeper. It's going to be much harsher uh, for those that haven't prepared. Um, Question here from Anthony and Shireen. And no doubt if we're heading the GFC 2.0, uh, was it the same question? Um, actually, no. Uh, do you think this will trickle down to similar markets like the Gold Coast, Brisbane, Perth, Hobart, Launceston, etc.? cetera? Um, I, every year, uh, term of uh, Christmas, New Year's, I write a newsletter to my clients and to my inner circle of clients with my recommendations for the year ahead, uh, just talking about what I see happening in each market, each property market in Australia, and uh, just my thoughts uh, based on my, um, you know, my research and my... Uh, the, the, the vibes that I get from the markets. And this year when I sent it out to uh, my database, I specifically stated that I don't see anything positive or negative happening uh, general terms in the markets. Uh, they're all going to be treated as one of the, of the same. Um, we have seen some statistical data coming through that, um, you know, Hobart's going good, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if no one can get money, then the whole system stops. And then when people start falling over, I'm not talking about people, I'm talking about organisations here. I really do feel that Deutsche Bank will implode, uh, just given the fact that when the GFC happened, there was $7.5 trillion worth of CDOs, which were derivatives in America that were just isolated to America, um, that popped. And um, that was just in the property market. And uh, that's what caused the GFC with all this stuff that needed to happen with uh, stimulus packages globally, etc. cetera. Uh, this time we've got companies like Deutsche Bank that have got like $75 trillion worth of derivatives just in their own organisation. They're, they're being called too big to fail. These are going to be too big to bail. Like literally the stimulus is going to have to come and flow into the marketplace to solve this issue is going to cause the hyperinflation that I've been talking about. And this is my opinion on hyperinflation, but... You know, I personally feel that, that these banks are in big trouble, the investment banks, and that's why they're trying to split up the, the investment banks from the consumer banks. Because if a, if a bank goes broke, um, the laws were removed at the start of this year where you as a consumer, your money, you were just accredited to the bank. It's not your money in the bank, which, is, which, which got enacted, which didn't go into the news. 
Um, questions here, with all the property being released to the market, do you think supply and demand will level off? Um, I think that we're still under, under. we don't have enough supply, uh, especially for the amount of people that are that we need to come into the country. We need to keep migration strong. So we've got more healthy bodies that are working hard and paying taxes and whatnot. And um, if no one has got, if, we've seen a lot of cranes in the sky, those things are gonna dry up from being in the sky. And in turn, um, there's gonna be less construction happening. And uh, there's a lot of, if you notice two years ago, the government started doing government projects and infrastructure projects, um, which is gonna take you know, the slack off the market from the concrete guys that are pumping for a slab for a house. They can go and pump a slab for a, a new bridge or whatever. Um, I personally don't feel that we're oversupplied on property, uh, but I do feel that we'll feel a pinch due to the credit uh, market. Uh, here's a question here from Gergs. Uh, servicing alone is 30 to 40% of someone's wage. Once the rent become 50 plus percent of someone's wage, it's a massive problem. I'll leave that one for you. Uh, yes, I mean, look, with, with the uh, rental income, previously the banks used to rest on just rental income and they used to uh, service and they, uh, they used to work out how much more they can lend you, uh, but that's becoming uh, lesser and lesser. So they, so they, so they feel income or they, or they want to see that you have a proper job, your proper income, and then whatever is the rental income, then they will take based on whatever is their slab every bank has. So yes, um, it is it is a problem. Um, in the past, I used to see a client or I used to see uh, or able to service for a client who's you know getting 50,000 income per annum, mm -hmm. able to service about 300 to 350. But mm -hmm. now that's gone up to about 75,000. You need to have about 70,000 a single, Mm -hmm. um, living with parents, no other expenses, mm -hmm. and that's where you stand. It is getting much harder, but this is the importance of having uh, a good finance team. Um, yes, while we've got Zinger. Um, so if anyone does need to contact Graham, just graham at zingerfinance.com.au. Um, but yeah, from that sort of things, it's very, very important to, to make sure you take good care of your finance and your, your financial position because if you get stuck from, you know, just this thing like an Optus bill not being paid and you can't get finance for the next five years, um, you know, it, it will hurt your growth and your, your ability to move forward in your, in your investing journey. Uh, I look at a lot of investors that I started helping out when I first started. Uh, being invested back in 2009, 2010, um, just at the tail end of the GFC, and people that sort of locked themselves out of the ability to be able to purchase properties at the time, you know, you would be pretty pissed off now if you missed the whole market cycle when you could have bought something cheaper than what it is today. I think everyone kicks themselves. I still kick myself that I don't have enough properties, sure. but you don't want to be kicking yourself out of this market. Um, the one you just missed, question. Which one? Oh. Uh, from Sam, what percentage of rental income is currently being considered when refinancing? Um, we still have that 80% mark, but the bank, some banks take uh, a cut out of that 80% as well. Uh, like for example, CVA takes 6% um, rental yield. If you get anything more than 6% rental yield, uh, that gets washed away. Uh, and then they take just that 6% rental yield uh, and then they service the debt. Other banks like ANZ and um, Navalon, they still take 75% of your rental uh, income. You've got uh, Bankwest who takes 80% uh, rental income. So yeah, you still have those happening as well. I think just reiterating the importance of the strategy. Um, yeah, the difference between you know, a lot of our clients being able to buy five, 10, 15, 20, 30 properties over the years, obviously getting more properties is tougher in the current market. Um, but for us to be able to build those you know very unique and large uh, portfolios you know 0.001 percent less than 18,000 people in Australia have more than six properties and uh, I've probably been a part of at least half of them whether it be through Zinger or through uh, some part of our business is being able to create those uh, you know elite 0.001 percent of Australian citizens that actually do have six plus properties and sometimes it's a matter of structuring the finance with the right lenders in order to um, you know, get those results. Uh, sometimes it is a matter of getting the right property. So that's why, um, you know, I need to work, like, for example, my buyers agency clients that I work closely with finance to ensure that we have got um, the right properties at the right time. 
which will complement the um, the finance strategy. So if, if I can line up a property which uh, is you know the right fit to help push for property number two, three, four, you know a lot of people get stuck on property number one or two and can't continue to go to three, four, five or six. So it's very important to get the, the finance strategy right. Um, just here, looking at the last ones, uh, we've got a jet, uh, but we've got here from Daniel. Hey, Nath, what is your feeling on how long the GFD will last? Do you think we'll see something like the depression where it could last 10 years? Um, <clears throat> we are in a recession. People don't realise it yet. Uh, it hasn't made its way out onto everyday street. Um, I personally feel that uh, I called it, uh, and I think Daniel Europe by Christmas party uh, back in 2017 last year, and uh, where I called that between March and May this year we will see, um, you know, very obvious signs, and come August to November will definitely be, in, and people will be talking about it very much. So um, I actually think that we're probably halfway through what the recession part of it is. Um, it's a deflationary stage. Uh, what will come after deflationary is once some of these big banks fail and there's blood on the streets and stuff like that, in comes the, um, the stimulus. The stimulus last time, since so sort the of first homeowners grants, change in laws for buying properties, change in lending criteria to make it easy to buy, um, lower deposits needed, more credit flowing through the markets, uh, lower interest rates. Uh, Kevin Rudd said $900 money drop to everyone. Um, this time, I think they're going to be more severe, so we're going to see lots of stimulus, and that'll be the exciting part. And I think that'll probably come in the later parts of this year to the middle of next year is where we'll see the stimulus coming in the market. And I personally feel that we will be very volatile. These markets that we've seen over the last, you know, many, many decades that last for five years, 10 years, seven years, those sorts of markets, we'll see them more frequently. Uh, I personally feel from my own research in the markets that we have probably seen, you know, four market cycles, five market cycles in the last 10 years in monetary policy territory. And that never flowed out to anyone. No one even realised. But the stimulus that was injected to keep the market moving and moving along, that's all getting removed. And every time that there wasn't stimulus put in the market in the last 10 years, we started hitting recession territory, so it's going to be very, very interesting. Uh, I feel that to answer your question, we're already in it. People are starting to realise and waking up to that. Uh, we'll be fully into it by the end of the year, early next year at the latest. Um, stimulus will come. We'll slightly get out, and then we're going to have to put a lot more stimulus in to obviously steer that away. A uh, question here from Gail. How long do you think we have to, re to release equity and should we be even doing that? What are the implications of just waiting until next year? Okay. Um, I mean, like I said earlier in this, uh, in this um, chat is um, this, you know, when's a good time when you can, if you can release equity now, release it. Yeah, there's no uh, kind of a time and, and, and place when you have to get there. Uh, if you can do it now, do it now because we don't know what's going to happen in tomorrow with all the changes, with all the restrictions. So it's better to take it off now. Keep it in your in your home loan account. If you if you leave it there, don't touch it. You won't get charged. <coughs> yeah. Cool. I think it's important to have access to capital. I've got a few questions. A few more questions. Emmanuel, will houses prices fall slightly during the GFC? Um, if we look back in the GFC, the property prices slid, for example, in Sydney uh, between the years 2003 and 2007 is the property market went backwards or sideways. Once the GFC came, all the stimulus came into the market and then from that we saw the, the property market take off and recover and take off. So um, what I see happening at the moment is we're in the, the early stage of the best part of the market. Um, give it 12 months prices will be back on the rise and there'll be a lot of activity because liquidity will be flowing through that market. So uh, I feel that we're seeing bargains and opportunities out there. How bad it gets is just depending on how quickly we can get stimulus into the market. So it's, it's just opportunity time. Uh, Alison, if you had a large amount of cash deposit, would it be best to use your equity as a deposit and put your cash in an offset account or use the cash? Um, just from both our sides, we can't give financial advice or specific financial advice uh, to you guys. However, um, you know, we're all friends and 
I like to talk about what I'm doing, and it's probably been the best way of me being able to share my uh, information over the last uh, 10 years to you guys, is what I look at in the market. Um, I personally feel at the moment having capital and having access to liquidity is very important. So I'm trying to hold my cash as much as I can, um, just because you don't know what's going to come up, so protection time. Uh, but at the same time, if you've got equity, if I... For me at the moment, because I, I, even I don't service the banks anymore, I've been you know, reducing a little bit of debt, but I found it hard to bring on debt. So uh, I got caught up in this going back about 18 months ago with the ability and uh, fortunate enough for me, I was able to settle all my properties. I bought 21 properties in a month and uh, they're all on delayed settlements and normally I'd be staging them correctly and get, getting through the hurdles. And uh, for me to be able to settle those properties, there was lots of big hurdles uh, that came just from a finance front and, uh, you know, put me in a bit of stress at the time. But I got through it and settled them all and bought them all. But, um, yeah, like if I had the ability to go and pull out all my equity now, I'm sitting on a shitload of equity of, you know, probably a 30% of LVR across my portfolio. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to go there and pull out 20 mil equity and still have, you know, yeah, you know, like say, If you uh, can do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, but no financial advice, of course. Uh, got wow, these messages a lot of messages coming through. Um, I'll try and answer two more of them, um, and then the rest of them will try and write on here. Or if you want to email Graham direct at graham at singapore uh, Gerg, Singapore government has a 99 year lease to buy at a discount. This will help people consider still be able to afford a home. Have you heard about this arrangement? There is lots of packages out there. Um, I feel that what we're going to see is the dollar die over this course of the next cycle. Um, the reason why I like property for is debt becomes relevant with inflation. Uh, in essence, your properties haven't gone up in value. Your dollar has bought you less purchasing power. So uh, for me, I'm taking properties that I bought 10 years ago and paying them off with uh, you know, today's money, which is a lot cheaper than what it was in the past. So... Um, Lots of questions here. We'll, we'll get back to your questions, keep the questions coming through, and, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up shortly. Um, yeah, thank you a lot, Graham. Is there anything that you've got to say at the moment? No, I mean, look, it is, as I said, just to kind of a recap, yes, it is a bit of a tough time. Um, we are seeing personally. Uh, it's taking a long time, but uh, it's, it's all due to what has happened in the past, so they're trying to correct themselves, making sure we're doing everything right, which uh, I'm a strong believer of that. Um, so if if you have any questions, if you think, or if you're not sure of, you know, what what's happening in the finance market or what is this uh, uh, serviceability and where you stand, yeah, feel free to send us an email, contact us, and we, yeah, we'll be more than happy to point in the right direction. Just on a final note as well, <clears throat> Graham's a very humble guy, um, as you can probably tell from our, our chat today with him. Um, the, uh, I guess one thing that I've, I take as a very big pride from, uh, from Zinger Finance is um, quite often you know, a lot, we get a lot of compliments from uh, the governing bodies and the people that are you know, in control of the mortgage brokerage sort of sector. Um, obviously, uh, the, the compliments that come through, uh, the way that you guys have been able to structure the portfolio. So being able to set up, we've been able to foresee a lot of these things that have happened of recent times, um, and you guys have been able to prepare for that, for the clients, and how you've been able to protect the clients um, has given them the ability for you know investors to still be able to continue to buy while 90% of the market can't buy. You know, your clients have still been able to, you know, continue as normal like obviously the constraints that are there yeah. but if you you know protect yourself by having the knowledge uh you know you've been able to certainly you know help a lot of people that wouldn't if they were in normal situations they wouldn't been able to continue on their journey throughout this market you know yeah. i know you guys have been as busy as ever so uh, yeah we are busy there's a lot of things are happening but uh, we try to get through to everybody in a timely manner Mm -hmm. uh, but still, if uh, if you don't get any response, yeah, just call the office, uh, send me a text, and you know, 
yeah, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Cool. And we have a, a large team of finance strategists. Uh, we've got a whole floor out there. So Graham's just senior finance strategist. That's why I wanted to bring him on today. Um, yeah, so if you've got any questions, email him, graham at singerfinance.com.au and we'll catch up soon. Have an awesome day and keep kicking ass with your investing. See ya.